My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Win Today with your boy, Johnny Martin. We are going to pick up right where we left off in part two of this episode with Mr. Mark Bell, who is the owner of Super Training Gym in Sacramento, California. He has done everything there is to do in the powerlifting and strength training game in this country, folks. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the first episode, please check it out. It'll give you a, a lot of great background on who Mark is uh, and what he's doing in, in the fitness and, and powerlifting game in this country today. Uh, Mark, one of the things I think that more people are are connecting you with is certainly those of us that have lifted weights our whole lives and have been into sort of the, the culture, the weightlifting culture, is the movie you and your brothers did, uh, Bigger, Faster, Stronger. So I just want to give you a chance to talk about sort of the, what the premise was for putting that movie together. I know your brother Chris is an uh, independent filmmaker. I had a chance to listen to you guys on, on Joe Rogan last week. It was an awesome episode, but I just want to give you a chance to talk for a few minutes about the movie and how you really think that helped springboard uh, maybe where you're at now as well. Yeah, so what happened was my brother wanted to do a documentary um, that was on steroids, and he started to poke around with all these different ideas. He shared some of it with me. Uh, I didn't really know where he was going with it. We had no idea, you know, what kind of film it was going to become or if it was going to be seen by, you know, a lot of people, or we didn't really know anything like that. Um, my brother had this idea, and he was going to uh, his producer, and they were talking about all these different people to talk to, Jose Canseco, Barry Bonds. And they were trying to figure out who they should get, you know, for the movie and all these things. And uh, my brother is like, well, my brothers know, you know, they know a lot about steroids. You know, they, they, they've used them before. And he's like, I, I've used them, um, but I don't really take them anymore. But my brother, you know, he's still on them and, and this and that. And so they were like, wait a second, your, your brothers are on steroids like right now. And yeah, why aren't we like, doing it with these dudes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they were like, Hey, let's go film them. And it actually, uh, caused quite a stir. You know, I, I'm, I'm married and my wife was like, Hey, what's this for? Like, what are we doing? Cause steroids are illegal. And so, yeah. um, you know, she was like, I, I don't know about any of this. And her and I kind of had an understanding that I wasn't really going to talk about my own use. I was just going to talk about steroids more in general. I wanted to come and film me and it, it kind of caused a stir. And, um, you know, when they came and started chatting with me, they started asking me kind of a lot of questions and I just started answering them. And my wife was really, really pissed. She like stormed out of our house. I was being interviewed in my house. She stormed out of, uh, stormed out of my house, you know, while we were, uh, while we were still interviewing. And, um, I was like, Oh shit, that, that ain't good. Yeah. That might not and, be good for me after I'm done filming today. Yeah, exactly. And then, <laughs> so we had more conversation about it and, and I, I told her, um, I told her why I thought it was important. And she was like, yeah, you know, I don't think anybody will ever see this. And you're, you know, you're really you're feeling, <laughs> yeah. you're feeling, you're feeling a lot of information for nothing kind of, you know, and yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, I, I just think it's important. And so she was, she saw my point, saw my point of view. And she was like, all right, well, I'll stick by your side on this. If you think it's that important, I was like, so many people are lying about it. So many people are lying about their use. They're saying they thought they took flaxseed oil and they end up, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, testing positive for testosterone and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought it was really important, but the movie, you know, the movie was shot, you know, now probably almost 11, 12 years ago. It, it's been, and it's been out for nearly 10 years and, and it got resurfaced and kicked around a lot uh, because of like Netflix and, and some of the, the more modern ways of people watching, watching some of these movies. And that, that has been, uh, that's been huge. Yeah. A lot of people will say, Oh man, I just saw it last night or, um, and then in the beginning, it was kind of a springboard. That was uh, kind of how it was known. And so uh, it definitely had a big impact on on helping uh, super training and helping um, slingshot came along a little bit later. But it definitely had a, a, a huge impact on um, just people being aware of who I was. Uh, no doubt. And I think, you know, now it's become one of those you know, even for people that are outside the powerlifting game, like I've, I've never in my life been a competitive powerlifter. I love to train, but 
there isn't a person I've ever talked to in a gym or uh, that I've come across when I've had a discussion about strength training that hasn't seen bigger, faster, stronger. And it was reviewed, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was reviewed unbelievably. Um, and, and your brother, Chris is still putting together documentary films, correct? Yeah. It got uh, great reviews. I think on rotten tomatoes, it was like a 98, you know, it was really, uh, which is insane because really got- they hate everybody. Yeah. They do. They kind of do hate everybody. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, my brother's still making movies. And actually, I'm funding a movie with him. I- I'm producing it. He's directing it. And we're, we're uh, dead in the middle of uh, working on a nutrition movie. That's awesome. So it just goes to show you for the people that are listening to, like you take a subject that is still, you know, and obviously not as much in the in the culture and community that you've immersed yourself with your entire life, but you, you take a, a subject like drug use or steroid use that is definitely still taboo in many ways, and you don't hide from it. You don't brag about it. You don't hide from it. You're just candid and honest about it. Um, and and it, I, I truly believe, you know, I've seen the movie several times, and um, it's one of those things where I'm sure there was a lot of apprehension and fear at the beginning, and, and now you're like, wow, you know what? I stepped outside my comfort zone, discussed stuff that was real personal for me, real private, and um, it's done a lot of good for a lot of people across the country and around the world. So you just never know. I feel like a priest sometimes because people will come come up to me and they got like their confessions, you know, they're like, oh, I did. <laughs> they're like, I did deep ball for six weeks, you know, or I did Anavar. And it's like people that you would never, you know, just some guy that, that has a uh, construction job or whatever. It'd be people that you would never, of course. never think of. But like, yeah, I tried. I wanted to be a little stronger. I tried some stuff back in the day. Yeah. Pretty, pretty funny. But when you've, when you've created that, you know, when you've sort of created that personality and you, and you, when you see you on film or even, you know, I've had a chance to talk to you several times before we do this episode, you really are that dude. That's just like, Hey man, if you want to come up and talk to me and you have a question for me, I, I'm no different than you are, man. I've just attacked this particular goal in my life, maybe a little bit differently than some people, but yeah. I'm, I'm certainly not too proud to have a conversation with you, you know, just a lot of life experiences, you know, and I think that's important for people. And that's why I, I get excited when someone, tells me they they uh they they quit their job you know or somebody somebody tells me they quit their job or even if they got fired i'm like let's celebrate man that's great now you're gonna now you're gonna like really head in the direction that you need to be heading and rather than sitting around uh crying about it i think it's a, another opportunity to move on to bigger and better things so to speak yeah you take the cuffs off and really figure out what's next and start to start to create that why you know um how would you say from a from a business perspective um uh, Because since you started training, man, life has, for you, gotten exponentially busier from a business standpoint. So you've taken this insane amount of passion you have for training and powerlifting. But now, I mean, in in a lot of gyms you walk into around the country, whether they're, you know, corporate level fitness centers or even the hardcore sort of dungeon gyms, man, the slingshot is everywhere. I remember when, when you first started making your products, John gave me some of the knee sleeves, like... Tell me how, where, where, why Slingshot came about and what Slingshot is now, you know? Um, yeah, so that, you know, how, how the Slingshot came to be, um, I hurt myself many times in training and, uh, I was preparing for a contest and I had, uh, a really good squat going on and some really good deadlifts going on. And then I tore my pec and i was like oh my god like i i really wanted to compete i wanted to do that meet everything else was going so good and uh the pec tear wasn't like it wasn't horrific i didn't need surgery for it or anything and so uh a few days went by and i was like well let me just try to bench in this like old bench shirt so a bench shirt is a is a supportive uh piece of powerlifting gear that powerlifters used to wear uh not only does it uh help with uh aches and pains and stuff like that but it actually allows you to lift a lot more weight and so i wore this uh bench shirt in a training session and was able to get through the training session and i I felt pretty good and i was like kind of just in the gym by myself one day and i was toying around with this thing and i was like wow this, this is pretty cool now this bench shirt that i had on was was really was really big it was like made for somebody uh who was probably closer to 400 pounds and at the time i was like 300 pounds and so 
I thought to myself, man, this is a cool product, but you know, no one in a commercial gym in their right mind would ever wear this thing because it looks crazy. That's right. Uh, and for those of you, for two, those of you that are listening that don't like to picture a bench shirt, guys, take a uh, a wetsuit that a diver would wear, and then. Uh, tighten that up more exponentially than you could possibly believe. So when Mark is telling you that the bench shirt was a little big on him, it still probably took him 15 minutes to get into the thing. I, I wore one <laughs> one Mark, I put one on one time, and it was like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. I'm like, I think I'll just, I think I'll just keep training without it because I'm not going to win any contests anytime soon. And it was painful to get on and get off. It was brutal. Yeah, they're really hard to get on and off, and they're they're really really strong. I think initially they were designed to you know prevent lifters from getting hurt and then the companies realized they could make more money by uh you know making them more advanced and, and designing them so that you could lift more and more weight and so that's what happened but i was wearing this uh bench shirt that was just kind of oversized and i was just thinking like man they cost a lot they're hard to get in and out of and uh maybe i could create something that would be supportive but would look different and would look cooler and and uh Bench shirts are always like black and power that there's always wear black and see so you can't always like uh, see them that well. And if I, I knew if I made a slingshot or if I made a product, you know, that it was needed to be a bright color so you can see it across the gym. And some of these just things started kind of flashing through my brain. Um, and then uh, a little, a little, little bit, a little bit of time went by, you know, I, I shopped it around a bunch and a bunch of people told me it was a shitty idea. Um, I went to a few different companies and they didn't really understand. They're like, Oh, why wouldn't you just buy a bench shirt? I was like, no, this is more for the, like the masses. This isn't for right. like just power. This, this is for people. This is for the guy in the gym who said, Oh, I used to be able to bench that, but I can't do it anymore. Right. And you know, these guys with uh, injured shoulders or rotator cuff surgeries or elbow surgeries. Now people can still bench press by throwing on a slingshot. And so, you know, I kept kind of kicking around the idea and after a while, I started to believe people. Oh, yeah, maybe it is a bad idea. And um, then my oldest brother, Mike, who people saw in Bigger, Stronger, Faster, Mad Dog, he passed away. And that had a huge impact on me. And that kind of led, led me to just kind of think about, you know, li life in a, in a greater, you know, from, from a greater perspective. I'm sure it and did. I just kind of thought, thought to myself, you know what, man, life is short forget about all these people saying it's not a good idea i think it's a good idea and i'm gonna move forward with it i love it man um, one thing about my brother is he was really uh you know john will tell you he he trained he trained john he's john's uh first wrestling coach yeah he has told uh, me actually he, and I, yeah, I actually remember when you know i actually remember when your brother passed away i, I remember uh talking to john about it so i'm i'm familiar with him only through the stories i've heard from from johnny yeah. And he's, uh, you know, he, my brother was really like bold and like, he would just, he would just put it out there, man. He didn't care. He'd get in the fights all the time and stuff. And so I kind of thought, you know, the only way that I know how to honor him now that he's gone is to take some of the characteristics that he had that were good and to kind of have them live through me. And so that's, that's what I did. I was like, you know what, this is, it. this is a good idea. I'm not going to take shit from anybody just like my older brother. And I'm going to go ahead and figure out a way to make this thing. And so from there, again, back to what we said in episode one in the beginning was uh, your resources are a lot stronger than you think. Now, this is a years ago before, you know, I was as popular as I am now, but I was able to um, start to think of this idea. Then I went to my wife and told her, my wife said, hey, I got my friend Marilyn. She uh, sews up. Um, uh, swim swimsuits for our swim team. So maybe you could take this idea to her and maybe she can like sew up some sort of like prototype or something. It's just so, all of this man is so awesome. Cause what, the only thing I keep thinking about as you tell this story is like, this is what people are missing in their life. Like, okay, you've been told no once, twice, 10 times, but <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to screw you guys. You keep telling me no. And I'm just going to go find the next person. And they're probably going to tell me no too. And then I'll just go find somebody else. I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, you know, I got the pro, I got a kind of a prototype sewn up. I uh, met this woman at a Starbucks. I told her my idea. I, I went to her with a bunch of different, uh, knee wraps and stuff like that. And, um, I you know, told her, you know, how it should look and stuff. And she was like, okay. So she met me at that same Starbucks, which is in Woodland, California. And, uh, 
we sat down and talked for a few minutes. She pulled these things out of, out of her bag. And she says, here's what I made. I don't know if this is what you're looking for. And I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I was looking for. I'm like, these are perfect. That is awesome. I said, I said wait right here. And, and I and she waited right at that Starbucks. I ran down uh, just a, just about 100 feet or so to where this Fitness 19 was, uh, blew right past the front desk because all you got to do to get into a gym is just pretend that you belong there. Yeah, like anything <laughs> else, right? Just keep walking in and smiling at everybody. You'll, you'll find your way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I uh, threw on the slingshot and uh, put 135 on the bench, benched 135 for like 30 reps real easy and no pain in my shoulders or elbows or anything. And I got up off the bench and from head to toe, I was covered in goosebumps. It was the coolest feeling. Uh, one of the better feelings I've ever had in my whole life. I was like, what, what the hell is this? This is an insane amount of like euphoria poured over me. That is so awesome, man. Because you realized, ran- holy cow. I, I got it. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. I was like, I got it. I got it. And I ran back to that woman and said, Hey, you know, I needed to make a couple more of these for my gym. So we can test them out, make sure nobody, <laughs> make sure nobody dies using this thing, you know? Um, and then from there we were off to the races and uh, again, uh, talk about using, uh, and talk about not having a lot of degrees of separations, separation and the American dream. I sat down in the Starbucks with my iPad and I used something called Google. Have you guys ever heard of that before? <laughs> and in my Google search, I typed in uh, knee wrap manufacturers. I found a few knee wrap manufacturers. The first one didn't work out very well in terms of making slingshots, but the second one did. That's still the resource that I use. And uh, we've been off to the races ever since. Bro, that is... Uh... You were just talking about the goosebumps. I get them just listening to stories like that because when people listen, my, my biggest goal through this is for people to listen to a dude like you and go, my God, like he just stayed persistent. If he can do it, why can't I create that why for myself? And I, I, I'm so glad I asked you about it. And for those of you that are listening, we will tag all of Mark's uh, endeavors at the end of the show. But really the meat of what I want you to hear, whether you are a, a weightlifter that ends up buying a slingshot or you're or you're not a weightlifter, what you could take from a a guy like this and that experience is absolutely invaluable. That is one of the coolest stories, man. And I've had a chance to speak, you know, you know the deal. You've been doing this a long time. I've had a chance to speak to so many interesting people from all around the country, but it's one of the coolest stories ever, just just relative to the persistence and not giving up. And, And the fact that it all got done in the front of a Starbucks over a latte and then you, you knocked out 30 quick reps down the road to make sure it worked is, is probably the best part of the whole story. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man, it's been a, it's been a fun process. And then, you know, also again, you know, part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not and realizing, um, Oh man, I'm going to have to hire some people because, you know, I'm a, I'm a power lifter and then I'm also an inventor. But I'm not a marketer, you know, I'm not a graphic designer. Um, I'm not a a filmmaker, you know, like there's, there's a bunch of things that I'm not. And so, you know, how do I convey this message to the world? How do I show people what this thing does? I'm going to need to hire photographers. I'm going to need a media team. I'm going to need, you obviously don't need any of that stuff in the beginning. I was creative and just film stuff off my phone for a long time, but um, you know, at some point you do, uh, you do need to make that jump and you do need to, uh, get a really, you know, that's what I advise everybody that's listening to this. Um, you know, get some good people around you, man, get it, get a team going. I think that that's the key. You want to, you know, make a company that's going to make, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars and and it's going to make, make your life enhance your life. Um, you you're going to need some good people around you. You're going to need a sounding board and some people to help. But if you want to turn into a multi-million dollar company, you're going to need people that are not only good, but they're going to need to be great, not just great at what they do. They need to be great people. And then to take that further, you want to turn it into something even more than that, then you're going to need a crap ton of people that are great. So it's just the stuff I've seen and some of the people I know that are really uh, making insane, insane amounts of, uh, not just money, but make an insane impact on the community. Like the guys over at quest nutrition, um, that company has, has crushed it for many years. And when I sat down with the owner, Ron Penna, 
that was what he said is like, man, get a good team. Like that was, that was kind of his only advice, you know? Was yeah, like, you know what? It's, it is, I believe in my heart, the, the best advice ever. You know, one of our mutual friends, Rob McIntyre from Hard Knock South, he's got a, a, a big uh, poster up in the gym and uh, he and I have a chance to talk a lot. He's one of those dudes, as you know, he's, he's just got a pretty unique way of thinking and I pick his brain all the time. And when I when I started this adventure with with the podcast thing, man, I am I I know nothing about technology marketing. People just told me for a long time, hey man, you know you got a real gift in in inspiring and helping other people. And so for forever, I just let I, I sat on that gift. I I suffocated that gift because I didn't have enough confidence in myself to fail and to you know know what what I I, I didn't even know what I didn't know. And and Rob would say to me all the time, man, you're the sum of the, the five people you spend the majority of your time with. And as it relates to business, you got to surround yourself with people that believe in what you're doing, believe in the product and are willing to to sacrifice a bit and work their asses off um, because they believe that something good is going to come from it. So everything you're sharing, man, is, is hits home for me. And I certainly would think it would with the folks listening as well. I have to tell my people to, to leave, you know, the people that work for me, I have to tell them it'll be like six o'clock on Friday and I'll be like, what are you still, why are you still here? So, what, awesome. what the hell are you, the hell are you doing? You yeah. know, or like, uh, yesterday from, uh, Andrew Zargoza, who's my, uh, my podcast producer, he sends me a bunch of stuff yesterday. He sends me all these pictures and all these clips and everything. And I, then it hits me. I'm like, holy shit, it's his birthday. And I call him up. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, it's your birthday, man. Go, go celebrate. Go do something fun. Like, quit working. <laughs> yeah. But that mentality is why the, your company and why those folks are as successful as you are. Because that none of that stuff, none of those, you know, luxury problems that everybody else uses for excuses to stand in the way of their work. Nobody does that. They just what they love to do in, in creating and continuing to build your brand and, and build their own because of it trumps all that other stuff that we think we're just owed because we're, we've been blessed with another day. You know, I love the story. There's, there's a story about, uh, about JFK going through, um, going through NASA and he's visiting all these different people and, and, uh, these different, uh, scientists and stuff are saying, you know, Hey, Mr. President, like we're all, proud to be you know to be here to put a, put a man on the moon and all these different things and he's running into all these different people well he goes down the hallway and he runs into a janitor and he shakes his hand and the, the president's just like hey we're grateful that you keep the place clean and they, they said uh you know what 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 do you do here like kind of asking him sure. his uh what he's responsible for and he said sir i'm here to put a man on the moon and it, that, that kind of attitude of everyone having the same singular focus is what ended up getting the man to the moon, you know? Yeah. For, and you need that level of concentration in your business and in your life. Yeah. And so the dude that's the dude that's cleaning the floors and keeping everything clean. But, you know, that obviously that story is unbelievable. But that that mindset that that guy had was a reflection, I'm sure, of the leadership in that building is that he believed he was just as important a part of the team as everybody else. And I think that's what makes stuff like that work, you know? Yeah, no one wants to be part of it if everything's all gross and nothing's taken care of and right. people are peeing on the floor and whatever else, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's it's uh it keeps a level of uh, you know, respectfulness of the place, you know. No doubt. A couple more questions but, but just to because I'm I'm for selfish yeah, reasons gotcha. super, super interested, but I'm sure our listeners will be as well. Um somebody walks into your gym, you know, young guy or young girl, and they walk into your gym whether they really want to train hard or they want to meet Mark Bell to talk to him about business advice, life advice in terms of your journey. I know you could probably point to tons of different ones, but could you think of like a single attribute for you that stands out above all the rest that has made you and continues to drive you and keep you hungry for the success that's coming down the road for you as well? Um, I would say, you know, there's a, a few, a few things I'd say like, number one, I think one of the things that I'm, that I'm best at is, uh, realizing where I'm weak, you know, and realizing, um, what I'm not good at. Sure. And so I don't have a problem sometimes saying, Hey, you know what? Like you should contact my buddy. He does this, or you should, you should talk to this person. They do that. Um, when it comes to like exact and real specific stuff of like, 
the science of lifting weights and how your cells react and all these different things. That's never been me, you know? So sure. I, I think, I think the fact that I'm not afraid to say that that's not me and here, but you know, here's my experience and here's my point of view. I think that has always helped. And I think that people recognize when you don't really truly know what you're talking about, I think people start to kind of recognize that too. And they're like, Oh my God. Yeah. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't take long, especially if people have a little bit of a background in what they're asking you about. You can only dance around it for so long before people are like this, this dude just does not have a clue. Yeah. I think that's been a huge thing. And then also, um, you know, I, I've kind of realized over the years that, um, that your passion is, is kind of for you, but your overall purpose is, is for others. And, and I really believe in, um, kind of almost losing yourself in helping other people. I think it's a quote from Gandhi, <laughs> believe it or not. No, it is actually, but, it, it, it definitely but, is. Yeah. Yeah. He basically kind of says something to that effect of like, you know, you want to lose yourself in and, and even find yourself in, in working and doing stuff for other people. And it's not like I'm a saint or anything. And it's not like I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to like run for president or anything weird, but I just, I feel good doing that. That feels like a good place for me to be yeah. is to show people something and more so than like giving them, giving people instruction. I like to give people a direction to head towards and so I might show you something that's a little off the wall. I might tell you something that's a little different uh, than, than maybe something you, you've heard previously. But it's going to be uh, to the point of getting you to head in the right direction. I love that, man. And then the last, the, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was, you know, for me, there's a, a huge, I place a huge level of importance on the non-negotiables in my life, whether it's non-negotiables around family, around business, around training. Um, but what, what would one or two for Mark Bell be that are just steadfast, man? And these are things that you will not waver from in terms of the way you're choosing to live your life today. Understanding that the non-negotiables can change, but on April 16th, as, as we have a discussion together, what are some things for you that are just non-negotiable? Um, I'd have to say that you know, some non-negotiable things for me are like, I'm not going to just, uh, you know, fold on my diet or my fitness, uh, just because it's, uh, somebody's birthday or just because it's, uh, um, just because we're traveling or just because it's a holiday. Now I don't mind having fun. And if I, you know, if, if, the, if I'm with my wife and kids and stuff and we all decide we're going for ice cream or frozen yogurt or something, um, occasionally I'll engage in that just so that we're all doing it. But even, even under those circumstances, a lot of times I just don't because it's just, it's ingrained in my character. And the other day I was talking about, uh, your willpower and your willpower ends up being uh, a byproduct of a lot of habits that you build No doubt. and those habits over time. And with the willpower and combination of things together, it kind of turns into your character and things are automatic. Hey, do you want bread? No, you know, yeah, it just becomes, almost, it becomes ingrained and in, in like microchipped. It's habitual at this point. Almost to the point where, where like a waiter or waitress will be like, Hey, you want bread? And you're almost like, fuck you. <laughs> like almost like you should, you should, you should already, you should already know that I don't want bread. Yeah. You know I'm going mean? like, to get up and hit you with this plate. If you ask me for bread again. Yeah. Just because it's like, it's so ingrained into your psyche that, that, uh, that that's where you're, that you feel strong with that, you know? And so for me, um, that helps build a lot of strength. And that would be a thing that's non-negotiable because, uh, I'm trying to live a strong life and it's, um, it, it's not, an, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy, you know, it's, um, it's very appealing. You know, there's a lot of sexy things out there. There's a lot of attractive things out there. Um, there's a lot of foods. There's a lot of women on Instagram. There's a lot of like sure. just stuff a, that flashes in front of your face all day long, all the time, man, that a lot of us have an opportunity to, to go against the grain on that. And time and time again, you'll see it. Uh, you'll see it happen over and over again to where you're like, you know what, man, that ain't a good idea. And <laughs> yeah. And in the end, like a lot of times, uh, you know, it, it seems like the grass is greener, but it's just not. And so for me, I try my best uh, through my diet and through my training to to build up these these good, strong habits that hopefully 
uh, will bleed into the morality of my life and, and hopefully provide me with what I'm looking for. Awesome stuff, man. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Mark Bell of Super Training Gym, Super Training TV, uh, the strongest strength coach on planet Earth, and more than all of that, a solid, solid dude. Mark, I cannot thank you enough for your time today. I'm grateful, man. I'm humbled, honored to be able to share this space with you for a little bit of time and uh, appreciate you allowing us into the life of the meathead millionaire, man. Thank you so much. Thank you guys a ton, man. I really, I really appreciate it. Uh, it was fun to get on the show and I, I'm glad I got on the show early. I know that this show is going to be, be a big success. And so I'm, uh, I'm proud to be part of it in the, uh, in the early going, I can say I'm not a, uh, not a front runner, you know? Uh, no, and I, and I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that as well. The folks that have gotten on board early on, have believed in the message and uh, I have tried to reach out to them intentionally. And I can't tell you how awesome this was to share this time with you. And I know that I know we'll certainly keep in touch down the road. Awesome, man. Thanks again. As always friends, this was another ap episode of hashtag win today with your boy, Johnny Martin. Be good to those you love. Let them know you love them. Have a great day. Thank you to seven roads media and cloud nine marketing group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget, win today. <laughs>